Howdy hi Thrill Seekers! Somebody the other day asked me if I would do a video about Samu, explaining what Samu is. So, okay, Samu is this big fish that lives at SeaWorld and it does tricks. It's like a black and white fish and it's gigantic and it can jump through hoops and it can kiss you with its tongue on, you know, if you lean in and they do it. Oh wait, no, 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 wait a minute. That's, that's Samu. Okay, Samu means temple cleaning. And I'm going to just look at it on my favorite Japanese English dictionary program. They define it as work in a Zen temple, e.g. cleaning, working in the fields. Uh, so that's, uh, that's how it's defined on, on the uh, jisho.org program, which is, I think, the best Japanese English dictionary thing online. But uh, maybe it needs a little bit more explanation than that. If you go to a Zen retreat, almost every Zen retreat, every Zen retreat I've ever been on or I've ever led has had a period of Samu. And what this relates to is, historically speaking, is that in the early days of Buddhism, Buddhist monks, as far as I know, in Indian uh, Buddhism, didn't work uh, for a living. They, they were not supposed to work for a living. Instead, they begged for a living. So I guess their, their samu, their temple work, was going out and begging. But as Buddhism moved out of India, where there was a tradition of donating food and money and clothing and things to... I don't know if they donated actual money, but anyway, they donate, making donations to monks. Uh, that tradition didn't exist in China, certainly doesn't exist in America. Uh, but in, in China, they started doing uh, work to to keep the place going you know uh, and often that meant growing their own food and and building the temple and you know getting gathering firewood and all that stuff so in honor of that tradition at contemporary buddhist retreats or temp contemporary zen retreats i don't know if this is a tradition in other forms of buddhism maybe somebody can tell me at their at whether the vipassana retreats and other retreats like that have a have a period like this but in, in terms of zen buddhism you always have a period in which you are asked to work at the temple in in honor of what the ancient monks did and usually what you'll be assigned to is cleaning or maintenance i have some pictures here that uh, that were taken at one of uh, nishijima roshi's retreats i don't know who that lady is but i remember she was french and that she was kind of um, insistent that we do things in the way she thought we should do them. That's uh, her with Nishijima Roshi, and he's doing Samu there, or he, yeah, he's taking a break from Samu, and there he is actually doing the Samu with the French lady. And here's Nishijima Roshi again. I don't. That's not the French lady. That's somebody else doing doing Samu. Uh, these are two two people. I don't remember who they were doing Samu. And here's me doing Samu. I usually preferred to do the bathroom cleaning. So the, the bathroom at the temple at Tokein, the, the toilet room, because the bathroom was actually something different. So I'm saying bathroom in the American context. It's, this was actually the toilet. It was like the kind of toilet you would find at a park. You know, like it, it, was, it was outdoor. It was open. These... these uh, there's no glass in these windows, so it was open to the to the world, and it was uh, separate from the rest of the temple. It wasn't far away; it was just right behind the temple, but it was its own room. And I would clean that. That was my my preferred cleaning. And the reason I preferred it is because I knew what I was doing. And this is kind of something about Samu that maybe is my own personal thing. But uh, let me tell you, if you happen to be doing a retreat at a temple in which which is under construction for example or maybe understaffed uh, with not a lot of people to to take care of the place then when you do samu the work will be kind of like what i would think of as normal work is similar to the jobs you know i used to do lots of uh, manual labor jobs before i do what I do do now. I'd spent years doing uh, tons of, of janitorial jobs and factory jobs and things like that. And it was sort of similar to that, where you would get a task and the, I, 
the goal of the task was to get it done. You know, there, there was something that needed lifting or cleaning or straightening up or organizing or whatever it was, and your job was to, to make that happen. And when that was finished, then your job was finished. However, in most Zen retreats that I have been to, it's not like that. It's usually the, the temple, you're doing cleaning, right? And usually the temple is already really clean. So, you know, because the monks or whoever is taking care of the place, you know, they do it regularly. So it can feel real weird to be given a, a, an assignment. Like, I'll give you one example that, that happened at the retreats we did at Tokain, although there's no pictures of it here. But Tokain, I'll just show you a picture of Tokain, um, had a, a, a bathroom, a bathroom in the Japanese sense, which means a room where there is a bath. And it is a communal bath, so it's a big giant tub, not quite the size of a swimming pool, but maybe the size of a really, really big kiddie pool, <laughs> you know, so, you know, a kind of place where maybe uh, 10 people could, uh, could bathe together. And the monks kept that uh, bathroom really clean. A bathroom, again, in the Japanese sense, as the room with the bath in it. So when you were asked to go clean the bathroom, it could feel a bit pointless because like it's already perfectly clean. But the idea of Samu is to do the performance of work, to, to do the work. And so Samu was, is usually, when you're doing a retreat or something, you're, you're not doing it by task, but by time. So let me see if I can explain what I mean by that. And I'm sorry about the I don't know what they're doing, chopping down a tree or something out there. They're doing their own Samu, and you can hear it in the background. And if I waited for it to be over, I'd never finish this video. So what I mean when I say doing it by time and not by task is that a, a typical Samu period in most of the Zen retreats that I've been on is between 40 minutes and an hour. It's usually as long as a period of Zazen is at that retreat. I don't know how they do it in Rinzai retreats where they have 25 minute periods of Zazen, but in Soto style Zen retreats we have usually 30 or 40 minute periods of Zazen and usually the Samu is around the same length. Maybe it's a little bit longer, maybe 40 or 50 minutes. So imagine you've got 40 minutes or 50 minutes or an hour to clean a bathroom that is already perfectly clean. What do you do? <laughs> well, you do it by by time. So you're you're putting in the time the way that you're putting in time in meditation. So you're doing your work task as a meditative task without a particular goal in mind. Uh, you're just you're just going to do it from when the bell rings that starts Samu. Usually there's a bell to tell you when Samu starts and usually when Samu ends, somebody walks around the temple with a little uh, bell on a stick going ding 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 ding. ding. And then whatever you're doing at that moment, you're supposed to stop it right there and, and, and you're finished. Which is one of the things I find difficult when I am leading a retreat to explain to people that when you are, when the bell rings to finish Samu, you're finished. Because either two, one of two things happen, which uh, the, the more typical thing is the people want to complete the task. And, and so they, they just keep working and then I have to go and tell them, no, you, you're done. <laughs> you know, Samu period is done now. Or the other thing that happens is they take the idea of, of stopping the task as soon as the bell rings way too literally and just you know, completely drop their stuff. One of the things that used to happen when I do these, uh, these retreats that I did fairly often was uh, there was a walkway down to the cabin where I stayed uh, down a hill. And there, uh, often the, one of the jobs that people would get was to rake the leaves off that walkway. So if people took the Samu, took the idea of ending the Samu too literally, what would happen is there'd be, I'm walking back to my cabin and there's like a, a pile of leaves eight feet high that somebody's left there in the middle of the walkway. And I have to go and tell them, come on, you know, uh, don't take it that literally. You know, just get the task to, to the point where you can pick it up again next time and where it doesn't interrupt somebody else's you know thing that they have to do later by blocking the path or something and then put away your tools and then you're done now one of the things i found was kind of instructive with this being not the 
I've gotten better over the years, but but typically I'm not the the cleanest, neatest person in the world. So one of the things that the idea of Samu and doing it by time and not task has helped me with is I started doing this at home is I started assigning myself my own Samu periods. And so instead of, um, you know, approaching my messy apartment and going, I have to clean this whole apartment and then I'm not done until I clean this whole apartment, I would instead say, okay, this week, every day, 40 minutes per day from 10 a.m. to 1040 or whatever time, you know, works out, I will uh, clean you know, or if you want to do, if you if you don't have, if you're not working at home like I I have been doing for the last uh, 15 or so years, uh, th- th- then you can maybe do it on weekends or whatever. But just set the time. And if you're a sloppy person like I am, and maybe some of the people viewing this are, then it really helps. You know, you just do you do it by by time and say I'm gonna clean for half an hour. And once half an hour is over, I'm done cleaning, no matter what you know, what shape everything's in, you know, obviously with, you know, just reason within reasonable limits and then pick it up again the next day or the next time you clean. And that actually worked real well for me. And I, and I thought that was, uh, was really good. The other thing is you approach the task that you're assigned with at, at, at Samu t- as a meditative practice. So, so you're, you're approaching it the same way you approach doing zazen. It is zazen in motion. People often ask me how to do, you know, zazen off the cushion, or meditation off the cushion. That's what meditation off the cushion is. You you approach the whatever task you're given as a meditation, which doesn't mean you're trying to, you know, eliminate all thoughts or anything, but just concentrate on the task and just do it to the best of your ability until it's time to be done and then you're done. So that is Samu. I, I don't know if I've explained Samu uh, thoroughly in that little video, but I think I, I made a, a stab at it. So if you want to make a stab at me with money, that's a bad transition, uh, you can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen dot info slash donate there you will find links to my paypal and patreon accounts those are my only way of making a living and buying material to do my own samu cleaning so i really appreciate your donations but as always this is offered for free so you don't gotta pay if you don't want to pay we will see you later have a good time all the time no matter what samu assignment you get bizels hey ziggy what you doing today are you cleaning up are you cleaning up the place or are you Chewing up that plastic bone? Is that your is that your job today? Alright, well I'll let you get back to work. See you later, Ziggy. Bye.